uh, on the quad. Uh, the quad is a is a mechanism which is primarily focused on the Indo-Pacific, uh, and uh, I think uh, that's an area where the convergence of interests between the quad partners is particularly strong. Uh, with regard to India and Russia, we have really a long-standing relationship with Russia, uh, a relationship that has certainly served our interests well. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 when, when uh, you asked about the uh, military equipment issue, uh, we have, as you know, a substantial inventory of Soviet and Russian origin weapons. Uh, and that inventory actually grew for a variety of reasons. You know, the merits of the weapon systems themselves, but also because uh, for, a, uh, for a multiple decades, uh, Western countries did not supply, uh, uh, supply uh, weapons to India. Uh, and in fact saw a military dictatorship next to us as the preferred partner. So uh, I think we all in international politics deal with what we have. Uh, we make judgments, judgments which uh, are reflective of uh, uh, both our future interests as well as our current uh, situation. Uh, and uh, uh, my sense is, uh, in terms of uh, this current conflict, like every military conflict, there are learnings from it. And I'm sure my very professional colleagues in the military uh, would be studying it very carefully. How is India's defense dependence on Russia affecting Australia's relationship with New Delhi? And have you raised it with your counterpart today? Well, I think that question has just been covered, to be honest with you. Indian community leader? Uh, Pavan Lutra, Indian Link uh, Media Group from Sydney. Minister Jay Shankar, there seems to be a diplomatic war brewing between Canada and India. On 23rd September, India issued a travel warning for its citizens, warning them about uh, traveling to Canada, citing a sharp increase in incidents of hate crimes, sectarian violence, and anti-India activities in Canada. Canada, in turn, has issued similar warnings of traveling to India for safety reasons. The Indian travel warning seemed to follow a Khalistan referendum voting in Brampton on 18 September. Will we come to the question? The question is, how concerned are you about these kind of activities spreading internationally as the community grows, especially in Australia? No, look. Uh uh, I want to be very clear here. Uh, when we issue travel advisories, we issue travel advisories as a travel mission for the sec security and safety of our citizens. So I would urge you not to read uh, something into a travel advisory which is beyond the advisory. Uh, what some other country does presumably reflects their thinking uh, and uh, their policies. Uh, as to uh, the, the Khalistani issue that you have raised, uh, you know, from time to time, uh, we have uh, engaged uh, the Canadian government. I have myself engaged my counterpart uh, on this issue, and uh, we have flagged uh, uh, the need to ensure that freedoms in a democratic society are not misused by forces which actually uh, advocate violence and uh, uh, and uh, bigotry. Uh, so uh, uh, it's important, I think, uh, for countries to understand uh, today uh, really uh, uh, how democracies should function not only at home, but also the responsibilities that democracies have to other democracies uh, abroad. Okay, so one last question, but before I before I throw to David Crow, I'm just going to make this point about the just from Australia's perspective, relevant to the question you asked, that uh, the Indian diaspora is a, a valued and important contributor to uh, our vibrant and resilient multicultural society. Thank you, Minister. Uh, a question on naval matters that are closer to home, uh, AUKUS, and also the operations of the Chinese Navy. Uh, there has been some comment recently from China about uh, naval operations in the Indian Ocean. I wonder whether there are any concerns in India about that. And related to this, um, Australia obviously has the AUKUS plan for nuclear-powered submarines. Um, 
does India see that as being in any way um, a problem at the IAEA, or is it something that India uh, sees as helping for the stability of the region? And I'd be interested in Senator Wong in your comments on this also in terms of uh, uh, what position you would seek from India on AUKUS. Well, uh, on your first uh, question uh, about uh, the Indian Ocean and uh, 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 the naval presence of countries in the Indian Ocean, uh, I think it's uh, important to appreciate uh, that uh, uh, a naval presence that uh, strengthens, uh, you know, uh, safety and security and contributes to prosperity and uh, uh, progress in a region by by definition uh, is is a is an asset uh, to the to the uh, to the strategic scenario of that region uh, now uh, where we are concerned when i look at my own navy uh, other than securing our uh, national security uh, we have over uh, some years now uh, developed a uh, uh, reputation, rightly, of being a first responder. We have been available uh, when natural disasters strike, when COVID problems happened, uh, when different countries got into difficulties of, of various kinds. So uh, I think a lot of it is really uh, what is the intent, uh, what is the messaging, uh, what are the behavioral characteristics, uh, how transparent you have been, uh, I think these are all uh, factors when any country assesses the presence of any other country's uh, naval forces. Uh, on the AUKUS, uh, uh, on the AUKUS, look, the issue did come up for debate uh, at the general conference, uh, and I think the IAEA uh, director general, who is a very, very seasoned uh, and a well, very respected uh, professional uh, in that. Uh, a particular domain is someone I know myself, uh, having worked in that field for many years as, uh, uh, very well. I think uh, he gave a very objective uh, assessment of uh, what the issue was all about. And uh, uh, I think we respected that and we urged other members to do so as well. Just on AUKUS, very briefly, as you know, Australia is seeking to replace a necessary capability. Australia has no intention uh, of acquiring nuclear weapons. We remain um, uh, an in, uh, compliant with the NPT. We have an impeccable record when it comes to compliance with the uh, NPT. Uh, and uh, we are working through and will work through with the IAEA to ensure that that record stands uh, with full transparency. And that was our, uh, what we indicated very clearly to the conference.